he has done for me and all that he is doing for me right now not just all that he's done but all that he is doing right now Woo -wee. man 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 if you only knew how victorious you was in God yes you wouldn't just be able to sit there and just ah yes if you only knew only. how victorious you was in God man mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. You see, it's, it's hard for me, knowing all the things that God has brought me through, knowing all the things that God has done for me, it is just hard for me just to sit and just be, oh, yes. That's just me, though. That's not anybody else. That's just me. Man, man, man. Yes, God. Lord God, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for your edifying word, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, for your forgiveness, for your long-suffering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I got a question for everybody. Are we living in defeat right now? Or are we living victoriously right now? So rhetorically, are we living yes. victoriously or are we living yes, yes. in defeat? Did you know that right now, who you are right now is a result of what you think about all day long? If you think defeat all day long, defeat you shall remain. If you think victoriously all day long in Jesus, victoriously you remain. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his way, so is he. So a result of who you are right now is a result of what you think about all day long. Tell it. Amen. Your attitude, your behavior, your demeanor is a manifestation of what you have allowed to infiltrate your mind. I'm going to be reading from um, Numbers 13 and 25. And when you get there, say amen. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> this all just, man, I love how this all just ties together. Numbers 13 and 25 says, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came, and Moses and Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, until the wilderness of Param and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where the thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. We brought back some victory to show you what's in this land that you sent us to. Now, nevertheless, it says, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in that land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But, but, remember I talked about that a few Sundays ago, that but word? But kind of put the brakes on it. But the men that went up with them said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. We are not able to go up against the people because they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched until the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants of the son of Anak, and which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, so are we in their sight. Lord God, I thank you for this moment right now. I pray that you allow me to use your word that you're giving me to speak to your people in order to let them know that they are victorious. In your name I pray, amen. You guys can be seated. And this is going to be titled, 
Are you victorious minded or are you victim minded? To go over this again to kind of paraphrase through it, they were being sent out to go search out something that is going to be end up, that can end up being theirs. One group came back and said, yeah, this is there, this is there, and that is there. Yet at the same time, with all that being said, let's go and let's go take it. Another group comes back, oh, hold on now. There's giants there, sons of Anak. These giants are there. I don't think we can do this. There's no way we're going to be able to do this because we are as grasshoppers in our own eyes. And the thing that a lot of people don't catch right there, notice it said, we are as grasshoppers in whose eyes? It said in our own eyes. In our own eyes, we are grasshoppers. Who told them they were small? And it said, and they see us that way as well. Did the giant speak to them and say, yeah, we see y'all as grasshoppers? It said, we are as grasshoppers in our own eyes, and they see us that way too. Now, I don't know about y'all, but most of the people that know me since I've been in this church, <laughs> when it came to sports, I was dominant, especially in track and field. One thing that I was really good into was basketball. But see, basketball was a little different. Basketball required a team. You had to play as a team. If y'all lost, the whole team lost. So I hated it because I don't know about y'all, but me, if you know me or ever played anything with me, be it a board game, whatever, I am highly, highly, highly <laughs> compatible. I love to compete. I cannot stand losing. I absolutely hate losing. Brother Wilson going to remember this, because when I was living with them, Brother Wilson bought a foosball tape. <laughs> Go down there, he will whoop my butt every single night, Brother Thornton, whooping my, every, I mean, we would get out of church, and I'm like, okay, come on, Brother Wilson, let's go play. He, I'm a little tired. No, come on, let's go play. I want to I wanna be him. He will whoop my butt left and right in this foosball. Then, got to a point to where the roles have been a little bit reversed. I started beating him. And then I got to see Brother Wilson do exactly what I was going, man, God, okay, I'm going to get you this time. Let's play one more time. I'm going to get you. So I'm like that. No, com com competitive, you know, very competitive. I hated losing. I absolutely could not stand losing. I hated it. No matter what the challenge was, I did not want to lose. See, in basketball, when you come together as a team, you got people on your team that are from all sorts of different walks of life. They come from different backgrounds, different atmospheres, but all of you guys are supposed to come together as a team. So about in middle school, you know, uh, you get this thing where, you know, you guys been through high school, middle school, the whole nine. Usually when you go to a new school, some kids that come from the different elementary schools around Decatur, y'all will all end up at this middle school. And also when you end up getting from those middle schools and going to high school, all of a sudden those different middle schools, they end up coming to those high schools. So when you get on this basketball team, you got all these different people that's on the team with you that come from different walks of life, that got different kind of mindsets. Now, at MacArthur, I'm sorry, not at MacArthur, at Roosevelt, it was a middle school. It's called the Apartments now. But at Roosevelt, on this basketball team, we had people on the team that made it. Once we got into playing, you know, we'll win some, we'll lose some. But one thing I start to pick up is whenever we lost, I was steamed. I would just be so, man, y'all have no idea. I would be so mad. And just to let some of y'all know, some of this was during the time that I was coming into Christ, so not all the words that flowed out of my mouth was church etiquette or morally right, okay? So on this team, Brother Thornton, we had some individuals. Every time we got ready to play somebody, man, look how tall them people is on their team. Man, y'all see how big them dudes are? Everybody on their team is over six feet, man. That is great. Man, these dudes getting ready to kill. Y'all see how big that team is out there? What are we supposed to do against something like that? Who going to do jump ball? These dudes going to get all the rebounds. This is before we even played them. Before we even played them. They already got this thing made up. Look how big they are. Look how they are. Look, look at these dudes are huge. They getting ready to smash us. And here's the thing. We would go out there and we would lose. 
Here we go again, sitting in the locker room. Here go another game. We go out there, we do this thing called warm-ups. That means you go out there, kind of get your body loose, do a few free throws, do a few, uh, you know, layups, whatever. And then you go back in the locker room, the coach give you a pep talk. The coach give you a pep talk, and then he will leave and go out there on the court. And we have to wait for the music and everything to start before we get out there. We get up there in line, and sure enough, these same type of folks on our basketball team, and I don't know y'all, man. I mean, these dudes, man. Y'all see, hey, everybody on their basketball team is dunking. Everybody is dunking the basketball on their team, man. And we about, man, we about to go out here and get our buzz handed to us. We would go out there, and guess what would happen? We would lose. The individuals that was on that team of ours, they had become so accustomed to losing that that's all they knew. They couldn't see no other way out of it but us losing. That was it. Losing. Losing. They so used to losing, but not me. I like winning. I like winning. I like being victorious. I don't know about you, but I absolutely 100% like winning. If y'all didn't know this, so does your God. Show me one time where he lost. Apparently the dude liked winning because he's never lost yet. Most of the time, before we played another team, they were already giving us reasons why we were about to lose, already giving us reasons why that team was better than us. This victim mindset started to take over our whole basketball team to the extent that other players on our basketball team started saying some of the same exact things that them guys were saying. Some of these guys played on my team from elementary, then we got into, in elementary, we won. If he was here, I'd give him a hard time because we kicked Jeremy Ingram. Y'all know Jeremy. We kicked their butts. We whooped Jeremy them but Jeremy was a trash talker. And when we, uh, actually when we played on the same team, that's what I loved about him because Jeremy can talk people out of their game. Jeremy can talk so much trash, he'd throw people off their game. But the thing is, I knew Jeremy's game. So no matter what he was saying to me, it didn't matter. And we smashed, killed their butts for the championship, beat them by like 30. That's for you, Jeremy. <laughs> so... We got to the point to where every team we were playing, they were beating us. Every team was better than us. Every team was bigger than us. Every team, every team we played was bigger and better than us. We kept losing. The mindset began to plague our whole team where we just kept losing. It got to a point, and I'm just being real. It got to a point where we got ready to play this basketball team, and it was just like clockwork. Coach said his little spiel, we're gonna get out there, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z, da, 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 da. The coach left out, those guys. Man, y'all know Bloomington Normal, man, they, and I snapped. I snapped, I went off. I started using unchristian words, I guess you wanna call it. I, brother Thornton, I snapped. I turned around at them four dudes, I just went off. What the, do y'all keep saying this for? I went off on them, guys. I went completely off on them and flat out just told them, y'all are the reason why we losing. Not us. You guys are the reason why we losing because all y'all do is keep on down us, saying we're going to lose, saying we're going to lose, and we keep losing. Stay in this locker room or I'm going to whoop every last one of y'all. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I was hot. I was the captain of the team. I was hot. I told them, if y'all come out there on the court, I don't care who's watching, I'm going to straight smack, I'm going to punch every last, all three of y'all. I'm going to punch every last one. Do not come out there on this court. And on top of that, if we get out there on this court and we lose, after this game, I'm whooping all three of y'all. Because I'm sick and tired of y'all doing nothing more but bringing negativity and a losing attitude to our team. There were teams out there that we were more than capable of beating. But before we even get out there to obtain the victory, we've already been talked out about these few guys. We get out there, I told our team, I don't care what they got done standing here, we about to get out here, we are about to smash these dudes. I don't care. This team was Mount Zion. <laughs> Mount Zion, boy, I don't know what they be eating in Mount Zion, them country corn fed boys, they was, dude, they were big. Them dudes were big. We got out there and Mount Zion, you know, it's our second time playing them, they beat us by like 30. We got out there, Mount Zion couldn't figure out what in the world happened to these boys. Because we got out there and we beat them by 30. Got back in there, coach. I don't know what's going on. But such and such, such and such, such, such. You need to kick them off the team. Because they're the reason why we kept losing. Every time we get ready to play a game, they keep on saying these things about the other team and making us look small. And here it is, a lot of our teammates bought into it. They get out there on the court and you can see it in their demeanor. 
They go out there and they're not even giving it their all. They go out there, they're not even trying to fight because they already have the attitude that we've lost. It amazes me that this happened back in the Bible time, and yet at the same time, this is happening in all of our individual lives right now over things that we are battling and fighting right now. Are you victorious minded or are you victim minded? Ask yourself this. Anytime someone on the church team comes talking to you, is their conversation that of victory or is their conversation that of victim? Say it again. On this church team, I'm not just talking about Christ Sabbath, I'm talking about the church, God's church team. On the church team, amongst the congregation, when anybody comes talking to you, is their conversation that of victory or that of being a victim? Because you're going to find out that ones that like to stay in that victim mentality, it'll spread. It'll spread amongst the congregation. Next thing you know, this brother knows what's going on. That sister knows what's going on. That sister knows what's going on. Well, man, yeah, this one person said da 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 And next thing you know, you might not know. Y'all know this. I mean, we being real. This thing, some things can plague the whole congregation. It can plague the whole congregation. Again, when someone comes talking to you on this church team, are they talking victory or are they talking victim-minded? Because if you end up buying into it, you're going to find yourself on the losing side as well. And I hate losing. I hate losing. I hate losing to the extent that whenever I was coming up, still up in Christ's tabernacle, there would be certain folks in the church amongst the teens and all that, that whenever I kind of seen them kind of slipping, man, no, 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 no I'm not talking about going after them because, hey, you're a sinner. You're, I'm not, no, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about things that they were dealing with individually up here and right here. I ain't talking about how the church, you know, oh, you're, you're teens, you can't be, you can't. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about real issues that people, the teens that I grew up with were dealing with. No, come on, bro. No, don't. Hey, don't let that get to you, man. Hey, look, don't, don't. You know what's going on. You know, that, you know this is what's happening. It's trying to get to you to throw you off, man. It's trying to throw you off your game. But you know in the end, it's going to be you that's going to end up losing out, not them. Don't let them get to you like that. That's what I did. That's what I do. Ones that know me and been around me long enough know that my number one thing is to see people getting absolutely 100% built up because I know the team that you plan for is victorious. In fact, he has never lost. God has never lost. He always wins. And if there's going to be any coach that I'm going to play for, it's going to be him. Any coach that I'm going to play for on this team called church, I'm playing for Coach Jesus. One day, look, on the basketball team, we were going through, uh, I think I already said this, we were going through warm-ups. I mentioned that part already, so let's skip that. So now, with that being said, you've seen the part I just gave you about the basketball team that likes to be, that likes to lose. You know, the, the losing part. They like to lose. They glory in losing. All they know how to do is lose. That's it. Lose, lose, lose. There's a flip side to this. But it's a good flip side. See, Brother Thornton definitely knows. Most of you guys at this church know this. Track and field. I'm just, I'm, it's not to be bragging on me at all. I'm just telling you guys. And track and field, triple jump, long jump, high jump, I dominated. I absolutely dominated. Some things that kind of plagued me a little bit from the basketball team kind of jumped over into also the track team. So you got a track team, but the great thing I love about track is that you get individually rewarded for the event that you do. So the team can lose, but you still can win. The team can lose, but you as an individual can win. So check this out. That mentality kind of rolled over a little bit in track. So I would be ready to go up there and do triple jump. And these guys that I competed against, I mean, look at me, I got skinny legs. I mean, we had to wear these shorts. I did not have no well-defined quads, no well-defined calf muscles. My legs almost pretty much looked like girl legs. And matter of fact, that's what some of the dudes would say. They were like, hey, who, who is this from this school? Oh, yeah, you know he ain't about to do that. Look at that dude's legs. That dude got some girl legs. He barely even got hair on his legs. Now, Brother Wilson, some of these other dudes out there would do long jump and triple jump. Man, these dudes, I'm like, oh, some of them, we used to always say things like, okay, he, he, he flunked like four times. Because they get out there, they calf muscles is chiseled. I mean, quads is huge. And I'm sitting there like, man, I'm about to get my butt whooped in triple jump and long jump because these dudes, calf muscles and quad muscles is ridiculous. Like, ah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't forget, Ty. What were you doing? Don't forget, Ty. What numbers were you putting up? Then I have to go back and refer back to the sheet, Brother Thornton. See, you get this sheet. They let you know all these guys' names that's on this sheet that you're going to be competing against. I'm looking at these dudes, 
body and what they look like, but then yet, coming over here to this piece of paper, I'm looking at their track record. These dudes couldn't come close to me in the numbers that were showing up there. They big and bad, looking all good and everything, but then yet, when it came to looking on that sheet, they jumping 40 some feet. I'm, I'm jumping at this, I was jumping at the seventh grade. The, 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 the person that's next to me, that's supposed to compete against me, the number two guy, I'm jumping almost 10 feet further than him, and here I am worried about how this dude looked. I could have sat there and looked at how these guys look and instantly talked myself out of my victory based on how I seen this person. When all along on paper in the book, it says that I'm victorious. It said that nobody is close to me. Nobody is close to me in this. Again, I ask you, are you victim-minded or are you victorious-minded? Because here's the thing, I don't know, man, I'm telling you, people that are super competitive, we do not like to lose. I do not like to lose lose so now on this track team what I love about being on the track team is again as a whole the track team can lose but you as an individual in the event that you doing you can be victorious and you can actually be rewarded for that so here it is we go to these track meets and they'll say this team this team this team won the whole meet this team won the whole meet but then yet, on the, also on our track team, there were people that were winning their individual events. So I got a gold medal, because I got first place in triple jump. I got a gold medal for long jump. Got a, long, got a gold medal for high jump. I was winning individual, although I was part of a body. But I was winning individually, because I did not let that talk get to me. I did not let that losing mentality get to me. I didn't let that victim mentality get to me. I was going to be victorious, and was, nothing was going to get in my way from doing that. And we need to have that same type of attitude in Christ in this church is that no matter who it is that's among us, you got to make sure that you are going to be victorious over the things that's facing right now. I don't care what is going on in a lot of folks' lives. It does not matter. All I know is that if he said I can be victorious and I can go and possess it, then I will go and get it. Nothing is going to get in the way of that. Absolutely nothing is going to get in the way of me being victorious. I don't know if you've seen this, this documentary, Brother Woods, because I know you like sports too. You seen the documentary on Michael Jordan, The Last Dance? Man, you see The Last Dance? It's called The Last Dance on Netflix. See this about Michael Jordan. Y'all gonna see a side of Michael Jordan, y'all gonna be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, we know Michael Jordan was a bad dude. I still say he the GOAT. I know y'all got LeBron James and Cole, but I'm saying Michael Jordan was a GOAT. You watch this documentary behind closed doors, man, you're going to see why Michael Jordan was so dang on victorious. I thought that something was wrong with me because I hated losing, and I, man, y'all, I'm telling you, it's a mindset. When you have a mindset of you hate losing, you're so competitive over this stuff, you do not like to lose, there is some crazy, you, my, people will look at you like you're crazy. Y'all just don't know, I, <laughs> I hate losing. And now I'm supposed to be a part of a church? Then when I go back and look in this book, all I see is winning, 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 winning. But then when I get into church body, I'm amongst a bunch of people that all I keep hearing is losing, 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 losing. So I'm confused now. I'm confused. This book right here shows the coach that I play for is always winning. And if it seems like if I'm doing what my coach is telling me to do, that I remain victorious, why aren't you? And we're supposed to be on the same team. How are we on the same team and I'm winning, but you're losing? How? When we play for the same coach? Oh, oh do we? We play for the same coach who does nothing but win, win, win. But all along, you got certain people on the team that got the mentality of losing. You are on a winning team. How are we walking around? Well, I don't know about this particular thing I'm going through. I don't know about that particular thing I'm going through. Well, this is a bigger devil on fight. You are on a winning team. I don't know how much more I can drill that through some folks' head. You are victorious. You are on a winning team, and you will continue to win. Period. Now, in triple jump, whenever I would win, you got rewarded individually. You get up there on the stands, they'll say, they always got my name wrong, they'll say Tillian Smith and blah, blah, blah. You get a gold medal. Now, what I like about this also is that on this track team, winning as an individual, you got certain rewards, although we're on the same team. 
You got some folks that didn't win. They're, they like the delusion mentality. They lost. I won. You got rewards, not just the medal. Brother Thorne, you guys know about this. When I went to, and I got to go to the Junior Olympics over in Barcelona, Spain, I remember I think the church raised some money to even actually help me get over there. So here it is, somebody from Decatur going to Barcelona, Spain to go compete in the Junior Olympics. Barcelona, Spain, from doing what? From winning my individual event. I won my individual event, and my individual event that I was winning in reached certain kinds of rewards. Barcelona, Spain, I've been through 39 different states in the United States, all conclusive, everything paid for, didn't have to do nothing but just show up and keep doing what? Winning. Winning. In Christ, it goes the same exact way. Although we are all part of the same team in the same body, but as an individual, you can be victorious and win, and certain rewards come along with that winning attitude. You don't believe me? Look around the folks that don't do nothing but talk about losing. Anybody you know? Ones that been in here. Listen to conversation. What is the attitude of them? Although they might be telling you about certain things that they're going through or certain things that's happened to them, but when it all comes down to it, the conclusion is, you're losing. How? We are on the same team and you're losing? If this is going to be a continuous mentality of being a victim, a victim you shall remain. If you are going to have the mindset of being victorious, victorious you shall remain. Especially if you're playing on the winning team. The God of this Bible never loses. So then how are you? Individuals of a body. Now, some people try to say, well, yeah, look, look. If the body is such and such and such and such, if now since we're all part of a body, if this part of the body ain't doing good, then the rest of the body ain't doing good. Ah, ha, ha. It depends. Let your toe get gang green. Let you, let, let, let you get one of those what they call a diabetic foot or a diabetic ulcer and it starts to actually work its way. You know what they're going to tell you what they got to do? They got to cut it off. Why do they have to cut it off? Because if they keep letting it go on, it's going to end up infecting the rest of the whole body and not only that, destroying the body. What are you saying there for, Ty? Because in the church body, in the church body, there are certain type of things that arises in the church body that presents itself as an infection. And if that infection is allowed to keep on going on, it's going to infect the rest of the body. Plain and simple. Are you victorious minded or are you victim minded? Who in here like losing? Raise your hand if you like losing. Plain and simple. No, so apparently nobody likes losing. But then ask yourself, if you don't like losing, are you, on a, are you on a losing team or are you on a winning team? This is a dead legit, are you on a winning team or are you on a losing team? I don't want y'all to respond because it's the right thing to say right now. You have to absolutely 100% know that you are on a winning team. Man, I'm telling you, Brother Wilson, whoop. Being in Christ, it does not matter what things have come my way, my family's way, uh, your way, your way, your way. If you are on God's team and you are truly on his team, you're not going to lose. You will not lose. I don't care what it is that you are facing right now. You will not lose. The reason why I brought up this uh, thing about Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan, y'all, if y'all saw this called The Last Dance, this man was absolutely not just obsessed with winning, but you could become obsessed with not losing. That's a huge difference. You, he, becomes so, he became so obsessed with winning that he absolutely became 100% obsessed not losing, doing everything he can to not lose, putting your body through so much stuff. And see, if you never play sports to this, to this uh, extent, you can understand. See, down in Florida, y'all didn't know this because, you know, I was, I was living there. We just didn't have that type of communication going on at the time. But down there in Florida, I trained myself, Brother Thorne. I qualified for the Rio Olympics. Qualified. I'll bring the paper and show you guys sometime. I qualified for it. Do you have any idea what type of strain and focus 
and discipline you have to put yourself to, to put yourself through, per se? Do you know what type of things you have to put your body through to get yourself to being like in that type of shape or being in that type of position? Not only that, do you know what it's like to always be victorious and having somebody always there trying to knock you down from being victorious? Do you know what it's like to be there? Do y'all know what it's like to be there? Sometimes you might think to yourself, that's not a good place to be in. Always winning, always being victorious, because somebody's always there to try to knock you down. But if you have a winning attitude and a winning mindset, it does not matter who comes at you with what, you are still going to win, period. People of God, y'all have to really understand this, that if you really are of Christ and in Christ and on Christ's team, there is no losing. I don't care who told you, what devil told you, what somebody came, what true new thing they try to show you. I don't care what they try to come with saying, oh, well, this is going on now. You are on a winning team, period. And I don't care what anybody has to say to you, period. You are on a winning team. And if you are on a winning team, start carrying yourself like you are on a winning team. Too often we walk around, you know, I'm just going through, but y'all don't know. Uh, this, this, this. You are not winning if you're like that. If something, if something has gotten me to the point to where I felt like it got the best of me, y'all know what winners do? Y'all know what winners do? Winners go back and they practice harder. Just like when I came back and beat Brother Wilson in foosball. So, <laughs> when winners lose, if they happen to lose, guess what they have in mind? They go right back behind closed doors. They practice harder, practice and practice and practice because guess what? Their number one thing is to get back and get back to being a winner, to knock you back off because I'm not no loser. Oh, I might have lost this one, but just give me some time. I'm going to go back and get a little practice and all that. And when I come back, I'm going to whoop your butt. You have to have that type of attitude because guess what? Your enemy has that same type of attitude towards you. I get, watch, watch. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get the best of them. Watch, watch what I do. Watch what I do. Me, brethren, is not God. If you have to know who you are in God, you have to know who you are in God. Enemy sit there, watch. I'm going to knock you up. I'm, go ahead, shoot. 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 See, triple jump. Man, watch it. I don't care. Huh? Dudes walk around. Man, we'll be on the, y'all just don't know how much trash talking going. We'll be up there on the field. Get, I'm getting ready to do triple jump. These dudes walk around. I don't care. I don't care who he is. Watch this. Watch when I get up there and jump. I'm going to knock him straight down. Yeah, he might have won yesterday, but watch this. I'm going to knock. Watch this. Watch what I do to him. All I cared about, you can do all that trash talking. You can do everything you're saying right now. But all I know is in this book on that paper, I seen them jumping 50 feet and you jumping 43. Talk your trash. Dude, dude, I'm doing what you're doing in your sleep. Now, see what I'm saying? Folks, look at this. Oh, man, you're cocky. You need to be confident in God. Not confident. How about god -fidence? Have some confidence. Know who you are in God. You are a child of God, a child of the king. And why are we carrying our stuff around like we peasants? I am not a peasant. I am not a commoner. I am an heir to the throne. Therefore, I'm going to carry myself around like I am an heir to the throne. And if anything wants to come up against that and try to knock me off of my throne, peasant, you can believe me. I ain't got the time to be dealing with this mess. You trying to knock me down is beneath me. And then sometimes I start trash talking back. Keep trying. Keep trying. Come on, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. I'm going to knock you right back down. A winning attitude. Do you have a victorious mindset or a victim mindset? I told y'all, y'all like, dude, what is going on with Tyler? Now, this is how I am. What y'all just seen, how I'm doing this, that's how I am in competition. Where Brother Creed there? Where he go? Because we used to whoop they butt too all the time playing basketball against them. They used to, when, we, when I first came in here, Christ's Tabernacle, around 11, 12 years old, and they would always say, oh, man, since Tyler playing basketball, Jeremy played basketball, we got to play the men of the church. Now, just think, we, we, we boys playing against some grown men that got way more body weight than we do. I think it was Brother Dennis, Brother Troy, Brother Rick, Brother Creeth. Man, they would just bang us up, whoop on us, and see, like I said, <laughs> what you say, Sister Booker? She gone. She said something, then she gone. <laughs> but they would sit there and whoop on us, bang us up and all that. And what I noticed is they're on the team. Certain ones that got banged up, dang, why y'all pushing us so hard? Dang, how come y'all keep? But me, boom, get knocked down. Okay, all right, all right, okay. All right, Brother Dennis. 
sitting there banging up against. Mm, mm, okay, go. Okay, knock me down. Okay, okay. But see, something happened. Something happened. The more those grown men with all that body weight was pushing up against the ones that actually were trying to fight back, they had no idea they was helping us. How? By us sitting there pushing up against Brother Dennis Stem and Brother Rick Stem and trying to, uh, 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 they had no idea they was making us stronger. Sitting there doing all that pushing, pushing, resisting, 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 getting banged up. They had no idea that all that was doing was making us stronger. The next year, church picnic, <laughs> coming down there, boom, dunking on them. Now what? Now, Brother Creed, yeah, what? Brother Dennis, yeah, what? No, y'all was talking all that trash last year, was banging us around, but now it's a different ball game. What now? What y'all got to say? We are whipping y'all butt. Already before we, I mean, God, I'm talking about by the time the church picnic come around, I couldn't wait. I want to get in here because I'm about to show them I am getting ready to whoop their butt. Saints of God, we got to have that same type of attitude where we are right now. It does not matter what's going on in the world. I am not sitting there being defeated by COVID. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm not being defeated by, oh my God, it's going to be a food shortage? You serious? I'm not about to sit there and be defeated by, oh, you see that they said that, oh, the economy. Do you know what team you play for? i never seen the righteous or his seed. So then why are we going around like it's about to happen to us when we're on this winning team? Oh, guys, I can't help it. I'm, I cannot help it. This was burning in me for so long all this week because I'm sick and tired of folks walking around like we just supposed to sit back and just be like, oh, you know, we just got to sit back and pray. You know, we look, we just brother, brother, bam, brother Allen. See, all this stuff I'm going through, see, God, all I'm trying to do is, and you know, and if God, man, so just brother, brother, please pray for me. Don't you love when people come up and do stuff like that? Don't y'all love it? Sister Snell, please, see, you have no idea what I'm going through. I've been through this. I've been through that, Sister Snell. And it's just, see, I just, it's just, uh, uh. Sister Booker, can you help me? I've been really praying, and it seemed like God, I know he didn't answer my prayer, but I actually want you to answer my prayer. It's pretty much what I'm saying. By you helping me and doing what I want you to do for me. Can you please do that? Y'all do know that's what that is, right? You do know that when we go to our brothers and our sisters and we so-called are going to them, that we're seeking out advice that you are doing the opposite of what Jesus said. He said there is one, one mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ. One man. So why am I going to Brother Allen? Why am I going to Sister Booker? Why am I going to Sister Snell? Again, when you come with that type of attitude, you are doing nothing more than showing people I am losing. And if I keep on bringing it on to you and keep bringing it to you, guess what's going to happen to you? You are going to start to lose too. Because you will begin to want to take on that person's loss, that mentality, that victim mentality. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You are going to find yourself losing. You have to have the attitude and the mindset that this God who died for the sins of the world, who defeated the devil at the cross, and the devil has tricked you into thinking that you are not victorious, you need to understand that you are a winner. You're a winner. And you're going to continuously continue to win. But if you jump on the person that's on this church team who's doing everything against what the coach is telling us to do, you're going to find yourself being the same boat that they're in. Go ahead and stand. I gave myself an aneurysm. The reason is, is because I'm telling you, I am so, so, so passionate about people winning that if you see, y'all know how it is. You see somebody that seems like they're doing their thing, they're killing it. You know what you find yourself sometimes saying? I want to get on their team, don't you? You see somebody that, like a football player, everybody in football, these big old giant dudes on the football team, sometimes you'll say, oh, well, you know, we try to do this. Like, matter of fact, we were so crazy, we were so dominant in track and field at MacArthur, there were kids who was trying to go use their grandma's address so they can come and be on our track team. Why? We were winning. Like, these dudes, hey, I don't know what's going on in MacArthur, but these dudes are winning. 
And when you have a winning attitude, folks, if God is blessing you and you are being victorious in God, do not feel bad about other ones that's of the team that's not being victorious in God like you. You are being rewarded individually for the work you put in and becoming victorious over the things that you're dealing with. Plain and simple. That's what it is. God will bless you as an individual when you are putting forth the effort and the work and having the victorious mentality to do nothing more than to win in him. Absolutely 100%, God never loses. God always wins. So these guys would end up, man, I want to go to MacArthur. Because, man, their team is dominating. They killing it. I want to go be on their team. With nothing more to do, I want to get on the team. Why? Because for some reason, when people go to MacArthur and get on a track team, not only are they going to already be on the team that's winning, but for some reason, they seem to develop and get better themselves. Woo! What if it was like that in the church? What if it was like that in Christ's tabernacle where we are nothing but surrounded by nothing but winners? Can you imagine what that would be like? Nothing but winners. We are nothing but winners. We are victorious. We are nothing but winners. And with that being said, if anybody that comes in with a losing mentality, ah, uh, nah, that ain't how we play here. Nah, we win here. Well, no, see, but I'm not as strong as all. Ah, uh, no, no, no. We win here. I don't care what you're going through or how weak you feel you are, you better put in the work like we're putting in because we at Christ Tabernacle, we win. Precious God, I thank you for being able to bring forth your word. Lord God, I thank you for anointing, for anointing me to preach your gospel, which is nothing more than good news. And the good news, the good news I know that we all have in you is that we are winners, is that we are victorious, and we will continue to be victorious. God, I pray also, I pray that you allow your ministering spirit that said it will lead us into all truth and righteousness to percolate the hearts of those that have the victim or the losing mentality to allow them to actually be changed around to where they will want to be a part of the winning team. I pray all this in Jesus' name who is the number one winner and who will never lose and who I'm going to continue to be coached under. In Jesus' name, this I pray.